Dear flight students and followers, welcome to our series called The Toughest Five. Our mission is to help you succeed by showcasing how to solve the most challenging ATBL questions. In each episode, Fabian and I will go over the five most difficult and frequently commented on questions from each subject in the ATBLQ database. We understand how tough these exams can be and we want to support you in overcoming these challenges by breaking down each question using sketches, easy tools and highlighting nasty traps and incorrect answers to show you how well you can prepare for your theoretical ATPL exam and boost your confidence in doing so. We will use ATPL Q, which is best known among flight students as it is designed to be the perfect addition to studying the theory. With one of the largest up-to-date question databases, detailed explanations and a thriving comment section for each question, ATPL Q is the tool to prepare you for your upcoming theory exam. So do yourself a favor, reduce your anxiety, get access using the link below, then study with us, pass your exam and take the next step towards becoming a pilot. The following questions will be from the EASA ATPL database subject mass and balance. So pay attention, we'll give you three seconds to pause the question on the screen to test your knowledge and your solving strategy before we start with the explanation and Fabian and I are here to create yeah buddy moments with you. So you'll see that in a minute. So sit back and enjoy the ride, grab a pen and paper and let's get started. Okay, we are now into calculations of mass and balance. You need to approach this question a little differently. So what is the fuel you actually need to get to Paris? It's 7,054 kilos. As you are still in Athens, you need to be able to taxi to the runway. So 7,054 kilos plus 180 kilos. And on top of that, we know that operations wants us to have 8,300 kilos of fuel remaining upon landing in Paris. Now, since our landing fuel is the block fuel, minus the trip and the taxi, we can calculate backwards to obtain the actual block fuel needed in Athens. So you add all of those fuel quantities together and you have the answer of 15,534 kilos. Now your question is, what about the other fuel figures, contingency, alternate and final reserve? If you think about it, the 8,300 kilos you add as tankering on top of the trip fuel already include contingency, alternate and final reserve. Now operations is assuming that you aren't going to touch these but you are going to use the 180 kilos of taxi fuel. That is why we had to add it into our first calculation in order to end up in Paris with 8,300 kilos. That was good. Thank yeah, you. buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right, another calculation question. Now the trick here is to look for the weights you have to add into the calculation to find the total traffic load. So ask yourself the first question, does the crew belong to the traffic load? No, they are already part of the dry operating mass and don't need to be added into the calculation. Then we have the passengers. If you look into the given figure, you have a column where it says 30 seats or more. Well, 70 plus 35 plus 10 is more than 30. So you can use this column and use the all adult 84 kilos. There's nothing mentioned about holiday charters. So you can go with the top line, meaning 105 passengers times 84 kilos equals 8,820 kilos. Next up, we have the 10 children, which are weighed at 35 kilos. So 350 kilos. Then onto the bags. Again, no information is given on what type of flight this is. So you multiply 62 bags times 13 kilos of the section all other. And lastly, the non-revenue load of 500 kilos. Add them all together and you get answer B with 10,476 kilos. The trap in this question is the crew weights, the male and female weights and the non-revenue load. Although non-revenue load is not paying, it is still a traffic load that adds to the calculation. We hope that explanation helped. Next question. Yeah, yeah buddy. buddy. 
Snit. All right, this is yet again a tricky one with one easy part and a more challenging second part. So to determine the basic empty mass, you just have to add up the weights that are given. We have 125 pounds on the nose wheel, 3,400 pounds on each main wheel. So 3,400 times two plus the weight at the nose wheel adds to 6,925 pounds basic empty mass. So answer C is a goner. Now the CG position is a little more challenging. To obtain the CG position from the datum, we need to calculate the total momentum arm around the datum. The way to do this is by summing up all the moments and dividing them by the total mass. As per usual, with a mass imbalance, the moments are not forces multiplied by the moment arms, but masses. So the moment induced by the mass on the nose wheel is 125 pounds times 25 inches, which equals 3125 pound inches. The other moment coming from the masses acting on the main gear is 6800 pounds times 180 inches, which is 1,224,000 pound inches. Since these moments are not acting in the same direction of turn, we need to define one direction as the positive direction of turn. For convenience purposes, let this be the direction of turn of the greater moment, meaning when summing both moments up, we basically subtract the nose wheel moment from the main gear moment, which will leave us with a total moment of 1,220,875 pound inches. As said earlier, this total moment now needs to be divided by the total mass of 6,925 pounds, which equals the total moment arm of 176.3 inches, which is the CG position reference from the datum. This will rule out answer D, leaving us only with answers A and B. Although B contains the correct basic empty mass and the correct CG position from the datum, both answers A and B state distances from the nose wheel. Now don't let them trick you here. For the position of the CG from the nose wheel, we simply need to add the 25 inches from the datum to the nose wheel, which will leave us with the correct answer of 201.3 inches. Tricky, yet doable. Next. Yeah, <laughs> yeah buddy. <laughs> Sweaty palms doing GNOF calculations, nervous twitching looking at the diagrams and performance and the anxiety to fail in principles of flight? Not with ATPLQ. Boost your confidence by practicing thousands of real-world questions and brush up your knowledge with detailed explanations. Click the link below to get your ATPLQ subscription and start learning today. Okay, for this question, we prepared a little screen recording for you and Fabian will show you how to fill out the load and trim sheet given in the question. On to you, Fabian. All right, so looking at this load and trim sheet, we can see that on the left side, there are already the majority of masses given and a few calculations already done. In the top left corner of section one, you will find the dry operating mass and the takeoff fuel, which are important since you will need to add them in section three in the bottom left corner on the left side. So to the already calculated total traffic load of 13,500 kilos, you add the dry operating mass of 35,100 kilos, which will give you a zero fuel mass of 48,600 kilos. Next, you add the takeoff fuel of 11,200 kilos on top of that, which equals a takeoff mass of 59,800 kilograms. Moving over to the right side of the load and trim sheet for the determination of the CG position, you will find that the dry operating index is already given at 51. This will be our starting point. So from 51, draw a vertical line down to the next row. The next row depicts the influence of the forward cargo compartment on the CG position. On the left side, we can see that there are 1120 kilos in that compartment and right next to it is the scale, which basically means that each tick in the first row marks 100 kilos. 
When doing this with a pencil and a ruler on paper, I recommend doing it like I am doing here. Just measure the length of 11.2 ticks in this case and draw a horizontal line of this length onto the vertical line you've already drawn. Also be aware of the direction the CG is influenced, which is given by the black arrow at the side of the scale. From the end of that horizontal line, draw another vertical line down to the next row, which is now the aft cargo compartment. Same here, we have 1600 kilos in that compartment and one tick equals 100 kilos. But the scale has changed, so take a new measurement of 16 ticks in this row and add a line of this length to the vertical line. Next up, there are the passenger compartment sections, starting with 0A, which holds 15 passengers. Repeat that process for the passenger compartments as well and pay attention to the changes in scale and the direction of movement and don't be afraid to leave the scale at some point, this is completely correct. Also note that compartment 0D has no effect on the CG, so just draw the vertical line from 0C directly down to 0E. When you are done with 0G, you will have reached the fuel index row for which it is stated in the question that a fuel index of minus 5.7 shall be applied. Apply that index in the same way and draw a vertical line down towards the diagram. Now take the takeoff mass of 59,800 kilos and draw a horizontal line from that value across the diagram. Where the two lines intersect lies your CG at takeoff mass, which is closest to 18%, which is the correct answer. As always, I hope this was understandable and made it a bit easier for you. 3, 2, 1, yeah, buddy. Okay, this is probably the trickiest one of all for today. Fabian and I will show you a five-step guide on how to solve this question. Okay, first things first, let's determine the current CG location. Given the question, the current CG is 3 inches behind the aft limit. So the aft limit, as stated, is 147 inches aft of the datum. So 150 inches from the datum is the location of the current CG. Okay, this was the easier part. Now we need to calculate the current moment about the datum by using the current mass of the aircraft and the current CG position. So 2750 pounds times 150 inches gives us 412,500 pound inches. Okay, in step three, we need to establish the equation for the new CG position. Now let's let X be the additional ballast weight needed in the front seat, which is 65 inches aft of the datum. The new total mass of the aircraft then is 2750 pounds plus x pounds. The required CG position we want it to be is at 147 inches of the datum. So the new required moment is 2750 plus x times 147. Now in step four we need to calculate the moments. So the new total moment is 412,500 plus 65 times x. Now we need to set this equal to the required moment. 412,500 plus 65 times x equals 2,750 plus x times 147. We are getting there with step 5. Then we need to solve the bracket on the right side first, followed by solving the equation for x. Once you are done with that, choose the closest answer from the provided options. Therefore, the extra ballast required to bring the CG to the authorized limit is 101 pounds. So answer D. This is a tough one, but with practice you can solve these with ease. That was a good one. Yeah, buddy! Yeah, buddy. Yeah. We hope our problem-solving methods were clear and our sketches and explanations were helpful. If you want us to tackle more of these challenging questions, use the link below to get your ATPLQ subscription and start practicing right away. Notify ATPLQ via email which question you'd like us to do a video on and they will forward your request to us. The team of ATPLQ is always there to help and answer your questions and the question you struggle the most with might be the next one we're going to be answering in a video. 
And on that bombshell, here is your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check, activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, and click the link below to start learning with HPLQ today, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning and the best candidates come well prepared. Wishing you all the best, Fabian and Captain Joe. <laughs> One, two.